Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and in this video we are going to talk about user accounts in the Checkpoint management server. So in the old setup we did have like this with uh, a router and everything but uh, to simplify this a bit and to not use so much resources in VMware I have changed it. So I moved the Windows 10 machine, the client machine to the Ethernet 3 and that's VMNet 2. I'm still using the link network, so it's easy, so you don't need to change so much. You just need to change the settings of this network card. You need to change the IP address, and then you need to power off the router. Our goal in this lab is to provide this guy with a console, so he can log in to the management station in read only and check the rules and logs. So what do we need to do to achieve this? Well. First of all, we need to create the user account. Secondly, we need to change something called trusted clients. Thirdly, we need to create firewall rules. And the reason why we need to create firewall rules is because before the console could reach the checkpoint management server directly they were on the same network so they didn't pass the firewall now when we sit over here in the blue network we need to pass the firewall and that's why we need firewall rules and lastly we need to install the smart console i have already done this because i did do a clone of the machine and then i have smart console installed so let's log into this machine the windows 10 in the green network and that's this one and log in to the checkpoint management station with our admin account of course not everyone should use an admin account of course you should have like a dedicated account for each specific admin and the admin account should only be used as backup to add a new checkpoint account you need to go into the management station and then you go to manage and settings and then you have under permission and administrators you have admin and here you already have one account and this is our admin account that is the super user and this is using the os password to log in and we will create a new user and we will just call it user one and i will put my name here as it's um, easier to find out who user one is the best one is if you can use like your normal username here and then you use like radius or tacax so you can connect it to your LDAP account or to your active directory. You're unable to like specify a specific group that should have automatic accounts in the checkpoint management station. So you need to do it two ways. You need to create the user within the checkpoint management station and then reference the user ID to use radius or tacx for a password in our case we don't have a radius or tacx server so we will just stick to checkpoint password and then press new password and you can put anything here i will just put checkpoint because the point of this is that you should select this one it's pre-selected user must change password on next login so you don't need to know other people's password and you don't need to select the password for them. So just press OK. And then we need to do a permission profile or select one. And there are three predefined and uh, we will just use the read only all. And you can press on this I to view and see what is the permission that it, this profile actually have. And you may want to do a own one of this because normally you don't want the read only account to maybe see identities. Maybe you don't want them to see like specific uh, reports. And therefore, maybe you should create a new one. And you can do it by doing new here, or you can go in under permission profile here and clone an existing one and uh, just edit it the way you want it. The recommendation when it comes to like ISO 27000 certificates and so on is that you should have an expiration date on all passwords or all user accounts. 
if you connect this to your Active Directory, this is no issue, but this is not connected to Active Directory, so we just have an expire and uh, let's have it um, one year in advance. So today is August 8th and uh, expire on a Sunday, maybe not the best, so let's take Friday the 6th. And you can of course put additional information with phone number, contact details and email and so on. But in this case, just press OK. And this is a management station, so you don't need to install the policy, but you need to publish the change for it to be activated. So publish. Now we are able to log in with this username from this Windows client. But we want to give access to Windows client number two. And to do that, we need to change the trusted clients or we need to add this network into trusted clients. To do that, you need to go in under the same place. So manage and settings, permission and administrators, and then trusted clients. So you see here that we have the trusted clients and this is correlating to our existing network for the management part. So even if you don't have a firewall in place, you need to be a part of the trusted client to be able to log in to the management station. This network was something that we did set under the installation phase. And if we want to add more, we need to press new. And then we do net 192.168.254.0 24. And we change this from IP address and we change it to IP netmask. So 192.168.254.0 and then 255, 245, 245.0. You can have more things here, but normally I do it under IPv4 netmask to have a complete subnet to be allowed to log in. And then press OK. And same as before, we need to publish it for it to be activated. Let's go back to our list. The next thing that we need to do is to create firewall rules. Because this client or this smart console, it uses specific ports to connect to the management station. And the difference is that this one will pass the firewall to log in. So we are passing the firewall and that's why we need to have firewall rules. To find out which port Smart Console is using, we can go to Checkpoint website and we can go to the SK5242.1. And this is listing all the ports that is used by Checkpoint's products. But these are a lot of them. And do you want to read through all of this? Well, maybe not. You can of course search in like the installation upgrade guides. So here you have installing the Smart Console. And at the bottom, it says which port are used by this smart console. I find it easier to go to Checkmates because Heiko, he have done a really good drawing on which port are used for communication for various Checkpoint modules. So here we have the client machine with Smart Dashboard. Smart Dashboard is the old smart console. Smart Dashboard, it was called when it was R77 or before but Smart Console is from R80 and forward. So Smart Dashboard, see this as Smart Console. And here you have the management station, you have the gateway, and the arrows from the Smart Dashboard, in this case the Smart Console, to this management station is the following. So we need the 18, 190, 18, 210, 1909, and then we need the 443. This type of ports, they are sadly exam questions. So you need to be aware of some ports. And one of these ports is for example this one, for the CPM. Because the 19009 is a new port for R80. So this is an exam question and you should be aware of these port numbers. You don't need to be aware of all port numbers, but there are some that is important. For example, the CPM, the CPM IE, and then the CDP. 
and this we can go through in a different video because it's quite boring topic but this is something that you need to study and you need to be aware of for the exam. Let's go back to the Windows machine and do the ports. So the Windows 10 machine, we go into security policy and maybe you notice I have done some changes. So for example, I have added hits because, well, it's a lot nicer to have hits. So right click and then you can put hits back and forward if you want. I recommend you to always have it visible. And you should also activate comments so you can write the comment in the end. And this is searchable. So this is perfect when you're going to create rules and you want to add some more information. So you should put comments on all your rules. One thing that I also did do is that I did take away the any and put the group internal networks and then I ne negligated that, meaning everything else than this network because these did um, these two while well, they complain on each other so it's best to have like a negligate or a real internet object and an internet object within checkpoint that's a completely different video and this is a big topic because you can do it in many different ways there is like five or six ways that you can do an internet object and we will go through them all to create the rules for the management station well we need to go above the stealth rule because we need to do it here. So let's add a new one, right click and then below. And we will do access to smart console and smart view. Smart view is something that we will go through. It's a nice web interface where you can give like uh, access for people to view the logs. And then we will do accept and we will have log and we will drag down this CP management so we have it here and the source we will use the 10 network so 10.10.10 .10 .10 and plus and then we will do publish okay let's add the port that we need so if we check the drawing so we need 18 190 80 190 and that's cpmi so that checkpoint management interface 18190 TCP. Then we need 18210. 18210. And that's 501 ICA pull. That means checkpoint internal CA pull certificate service. TCP 18210. Thirdly, we need 19009. 19009. And that's the CPM. So that stands for Checkpoint Management Server. This is the new port for R80. And then we also need 443 for Smart Log and Smart View. So 443. So here we have our rule. So publish. Oh, I see I almost made a mistake. Uh, we put in the old network here. Let's put the new one <laughs> instead. So delete this one. And then uh, 192, 168, 254, dot zero. So just publish. And then we will do install policy again. And same question. Okay, the policy is installed. Let's go into the Windows 10 machine, the client one. So checkpoint console. And I did do a clone of this machine and uh, user one and then our password checkpoint login. And we get the change password, so that's perfect. Checkpoint and then our new password. And after this, we should be able to uh, at least have a read only account. Okay, so this is how the read only is looking. So down here in the right corner, you can see read only and you can see our username and we see a little guy here and that's 
another connected administrator and you can click here and then you can see that the admin account is logged in and you can press more details and you can see under um, manage and settings sessions view sessions that you have an admin account and then a read only account that has logged in and um, let's go to the policy so see how it looks so security policy and you see everything is like half grayed out or blued out if i click here you see that i can see all the logs so that's really nice but if i right click i cannot do any changes so the read only account is working i see all the logs and i can do like this i can still do my hit counts hopefully we get something in here maybe soon ah let's wait but uh, anyways, the logs are working. Perfect. So let's go into the logs and monitor. And uh, logs. And let's search for our own um, IP. Press OK. We can see here that it's a lot of uh, 443. So something is working. Smart console and uh, smart view. Just a bonus tip for you guys. You see here in logs, we don't see any like CPM and so on. And that's a bit annoying, but uh, did you remember the implicit rules? So under actions, we have implied rules. And here we have firewall rules and we have GUI clients to firewall management, CPM and CPMI. And these are not logged. Um, so let's change this. This is annoying. Of course, you should be able to see all the logs. So close. Uh, let's go back to the Windows 10 machine. And uh, we have actions, implied rules. And then we have configuration. And I want to log the implied rules. Okay. So publish, publish. So, so in real, you didn't need this one because it's an implied rule that this should work because this network is part of the trusted clients. If it wouldn't be part of the trusted clients, this would fail. But, um, well, implied rules is important to, to remember and now we have changed to, to log implied rules. So let's do an install policy because I want to see. Let's generate some new logs. So I will do the Windows 10 machine. I will just uh, disconnect here and uh, reconnect with our new password just to see that we actually get in the logs. I don't like that rules without logging. Then you start to question yourself like, is this really needed? But um, well, even I forgot it. So hopefully, well here, we have 19. Uh, let's see if this is only HTTPS, maybe. Let's go back to this one and do 192.168.1.200 and 192.168.1.254.100. No, let's see if this is showing up some stuff. Well, here, finally, we have a real log. And you also see here, implied rules. So for this to work, we needed both CPN on port TCP 19009. And we also needed CPMI on TCP 18190. And that's also TCP. That's it for this video. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. That will mean a lot to me. Here you did really see the importance of the implied rules. I have a video regarding it and make sure to watch that one as well. It's uh, really important to know this part, especially when it comes to the certificate. I know for a fact there is also questions regarding these two ports. So CPM and CPMI, make sure to just bogger it down and uh, remember this, these two ports. That's it. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.